Hello, hello, everybody. It is 11.22 p.m. Central Time on the 26th of May, 2021, Wednesday night here in the United States. Hope you're doing well. I've got some breaking news. I put out a little blurb over on my community page on YouTube, which kind of gives away what we're going to be talking about. Let me get a display capture turned on so you can see what I'm talking about here. We've got some kind of volcanic disturbance taking place out in the Mojave Desert. What we're looking at here is NEXRAD radar coming from the Edwards Air Force Base NEXRAD. Currently looking at the base reflectivity. This is just what you would look with current weather to see rain. And you can see the intensity over here on the right-hand side. Now, we've already ruled out that this is not some kind of dust storm. This is not some kind of thunderstorm. This just kicks up out of nowhere from a fine point on the ground south of the highway. Now, we know there's something there because this goes back to how I got my start on YouTube, of all things. For all the new viewers here, let me just quickly explain something to you. Ten years ago, in July of 2011, this almost exact same thing happened. A plume appeared and blew up, went up to several thousand feet and then blew with the Santa Ana winds down towards L.A. and started to dissipate by the time it got down here towards L.A. This is L.A. These are the highways going out to the Mojave, and I'm going to go show you what's there on Google Earth. So in 2011, when this happened, I didn't have live stream capability back then, obviously. or I, I, There were live streams, but you couldn't stream on YouTube. I made a video, and I zoomed in on the spot where this plume was originating from, this moisture plume on the desert in a clear day, which I'm going to prove to you in a second. It's clear there. But this is what is there. Pisgah Crater and a lava flow. And zooming in on it back in 2011, it was lower grade imagery, but you could still definitely tell it was a volcano. That day, the same day I put out the video, I had maybe just a few thousand subscribers at the time. Again, this is 2011, 10 years ago when I first started my channel. And showing the radar... And the USGS responded that day in a press release from the California Volcano Observatory. And I'll go pull up the results from 2011 here, where you can see people in July, September, and October. It happened three times. And in July, July 30th of 2011, this is somebody else talking about my thing going on with the USGS responding to me in a press release. And this is the press release. A YouTube, this is from the USGS, Barstow, talking about Pisgah Crater the day I put out my video, July 25th, 2011. A YouTube user who claimed to have discovered a volcanic eruption in the Mojave Desert over the weekend was mistaken, U.S. Geological Survey officials said Monday. YouTube video posted Saturday evening displayed radar images and Google Earth maps. A narrator described what he believed to be evidence of a volcanic eruption over Pisgah Crater. I didn't say it was an eruption. It was steam. It was some kind of large release of moisture of some kind. Not a geyser, but something over many miles. Anyway, listen. They blame it on a thunderstorm. Okay, you guys can go on and read this. You can go find their original press release. I'm just bringing you up to speed that this happened in 2011. They tried to blame it on a thunderstorm. On day one, they tried to blame it on a thunderstorm. It went on for three days. It went on for three full days. Day two, they deleted their press release. You can still, again, find it online in the archives, but they deleted it from their page, and it went on for a day after that, even. People tried to say it was maybe a military explosion of some kind, but now here we are. We're looking at the shortwave infrared, and out here in the Mojave Desert. Now, I can even turn on the highways. We'll turn on U.S. interstates, and we're looking just south of the bend in the dip of the road here, which will go compare to the radar here from Edwards Air Force Base. Now, we can see this on other radar stations as well. It's not just coming from the Edwards. The other stations in the area are picking it up on the perimeter of their coverage areas. So you see where it originates. It originates just south of the highway. And we know they're not doing any bombing runs out there on the highway, of course. So let's just look again. This is bringing us up to current imagery on shortwave infrared, which is going to show us any kind of moisture or cloud cover. There is nothing there picked up by, again, at a high altitude going down to ground level. So whatever it is, it's some kind of steam return, and it's some kind of moisture. We know it's moisture because we can look at the hydrometer classification on this. And right at the end, which I've already looked at, you can see it's getting green, with, which stands for rain, of course, right here. 
and we'll take this back and you'll see it starts on watch first the computer doesn't know what to make of it then boom it turns into rain it's heading to the west now we can also look at the echo tops on this to see how high this is being detected and it starts down at a lower level starts down at about 2,000 feet with this light blue color which is by the way 2,000 feet is the altitude here moving my mouse you can look down in the right hand corner below where it says Google Earth and you'll see ELEV you might not see it unless you're looking at full screen on a big screen or something but ELEV and moving my mouse over here we're at about 2,200 feet right there going up to the mountaintop 2,400 2,500 2,800 we go from 2,000 to 2,800 feet right here elevation wise why does that matter we get back over here that's where it starts picked up 2,000 feet right there then boom it starts to grow immediately goes up to 14,000 feet then at 14,000 feet or so it settles out to 10 and starts to settle it's starting to settle right now so it peaked up boom and it's settling out as it's spreading out to the west now we can go look at the which way the wind is blowing and we can look at the wind meter basically the wind classifications on here from the radar and I can move this back to the start now we're looking sideways now this is ground level and we go up to 50,000 feet altitude KFT now we're looking around 10 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 that's where this whole event is really happening goes up to maybe 15 right about there I would say is that's where we're dealing with it and it goes on right to there at 11 10 or 11,000 yeah oh, peaks out at 14 and then comes back down and that's what we're dealing with right now so there's nothing visible actually as weather wise it's a clear night if you will and we go over on the radar let's go back to the base reflectivity this is what we're going to use just to view regular rain and you see again it originates on a very fine point on the ground right there bright dot okay we can go south of the highway and identify the location again we can get a size perspective on this that's going to be pretty easy to do so here's the highway here's the dip to the south we're going just south somewhere right out here just to the east of the ancient volcanoes which just to the east we have more by the way down to the south Amboy crater the other I should say the other Amboy crater down to the east by southeast down here with its old lava flow and you can see the old lava flow of course is covered in sand we go back up here and somewhere right down in here is where this giant plume is coming from right off the highway a few miles south now when this happened in 2011 again like I told you USGS issued their press release they first tried to say it was a thunderstorm went on for three days sporadically popping off time after time from the same spot here just east of the old lava flows people try to then say maybe it was the military but same spot over and over again okay the military actually contacted me down below my old video back in 2011 this is right before my channel got terminated in September of 2011 my YouTube channel got shut down for the first time long story on that but one month before at the end of July start of August this whole thing happened and I got contacted by the base communications commander from 29 Palms military base all the way down here okay 29 Palms military base now they weren't doing any bombing he wanted me to call them at the base so I called the base and I did <laughs> young YouTube channel dumbass I called him at the base they put me through a switchboard put me through to a secretary it really was legit and got a hold of the guy and he wanted me to take down my video because they were worried that people on the base were going to go people that live there were going to go and access the roads that only the people on the base can access and they were worried that there were people were going to go out there and go and try and investigate and so he just wanted me to take the video down I said well are you doing explosions out there and he's like no no we don't do any bombing runs out there at least not up by the highway certainly not and uh but they were worried people were going to try and access it from the military base and wanted me and I said look if I take the video down it's going to get more suspicious people are going to freak I should just put a disclaimer on the video and he hemmed and hawed and we talked and, and I put this big red box that you used to be able to put on YouTube you could put a notice over the video that would pop up kind of see-through on a red notice and it said do not go out there blah 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 well my video videos have an impact on people apparently they drove out there my viewers went out on the highways 
and stayed on the highways, of course, and the outer roads. It's the Mojave Desert out here, so you got to be careful. I would never encourage people to go out there. But they did. And they found Raytheon trucks driving around with VLF antennas hooked up all over the back of them. And they got pictures of it. You can still find the videos over on YouTube. When all my viewers went out in 2011 to go investigate, this was like three days after it finished, to go see if there was anything out there. And of course, nothing was there at the time. Now, what I think happened at the time and what I think is happening now, this is a few miles wide. Look at it. It starts out a few miles wide. Science perspective. We can even measure on the ground to try and really figure it out, but I'd say that's at least two miles wide. So let's measure two miles on the ground down here somewhere. There we go. At two and a half, two. Okay, so a two mile wide area starts to steam or maybe it would just get really humid and hazy in the desert right there at a ground level. And it starts to rise. Of course, heat, rise, steam, right in the edge of the desert. And the next thing you know, it gets picked up with dust, of course, from the desert. And dust and moisture, humidity mix, and you get rain. It's the building block for rain, is dust. Water molecules accumulate onto the dust, and then you get rain. So if you get a good mix, it gets kicked up. And clearly there is. So we can look at other classifications on the radar. We can look at the velocity, see which way it's blowing, how fast. Towards the radar is green. Away from the radar is red. Let's just show you throughout the day. Here it is throughout the day. Look, look what starts happening about halfway throughout the day. It starts getting a little bit something. Static, though, it's not really moving much. Down at a low level. And then, boom, blows up. Towards the radar is green. That's base velocity on whatever it is. Now we can go to vertical, vertical integrated liquid. Go back to that, and it's going to show us the precipitation. The actual precip amounts that are detected on this. And look, it actually got a little bit of actual vertical integrated liquid in that. Now the precipitation amounts, I think we can even see that. Let's see. Is that back with the hydrometer classifications, I think? No? No? Maybe it doesn't. Okay, well, let's go look at... Our, no, we do have... We have our one-hour precipitation totals. Now, look at that. A tenth of an inch coming off that. And you can see the beams. By the way, the pulses produce their own precipitation. Don't get me into how a microwave pulse can produce precipitation in the atmosphere. Same way a piece of dust can, actually. The electrons, though, act like a piece of dust and attract a water molecule that way. Tenth of an inch of rain on two beams shooting out into the desert. Hmm. But let's not look at that. Let's look here. And that's, of course, some kind of precipitation assigned to it, falling from a low level. I just showed it to you on the wind. It's at six to 10,000 feet in the desert at the end of a clear day, coming from a volcanic complex. So my title over on YouTube, on my community page that I put out to get you guys over here to watch, is accurate. A volcanic complex in the Mojave Desert has just had some kind of multi-mile-wide steam release that was kicked up with some dust and blew over so far, as far as the western central Mojave Desert. And we can go back over to the radar, and we can go back to their base reflectivity and see... Oh, we can also see that it's not dust. Again, when you have rain mixed in here, green... The greenish mixed in with the yellow. The low level comes up from a low level. You can see it like a crater exploding. Boom. And then it blows over to the west, northwest. It's heading up towards the highway intersection. So another way to look at it is out here. Something blew up. Went up to ten to 15,000 feet. Has spread over as far as this way. And we have hot spots over here on the edge of there, by the way. Detected by the computer that are filtering it out. Saying, don't worry. It's just a mistake. Two hotspots, actually. One here and one here. Detected by the weather satellite. So will it go all the way over to the west? I don't think the Santa Anas are strong enough or high enough, or it hasn't gotten that high to reach over and go over into L.A. like it did back in 2011. When In 2011, it was high enough. It blew over the mountains, and it dissipated somewhere in north L.A., and it was steam of some kind. It was invisible 
to the human eye in 2011 during the daytime. So at nighttime, it's a little bit different. We, of course, can't go look at the visual, but let's go back and take a look at a few other ways we can look at the long wave infrared. Shows nothing. I'm going to already tell you. We already look. Clear as a whistle out there. Is the desert. This is the spot we're watching right here. Long wave infrared showing absolutely nothing. Okay, let's go look at lower level water vapor. Again, we're looking right here. And this is the most current. Nothing. Not even a little bit detected from up above looking down. But down at a low level from just a few thousand feet up to 10, it's detecting something, some kind of moisture. Steam. A large, vast area. Don't think of Old Faithful Geyser. Think of a whole valley in California getting hazy very quickly and that rising. That's what I think is going on. But what could cause it? Let's go back and look at the location again. What, gee, I wonder. We're sandwiched between three volcanoes. One from the Pleistocene Ice Age called Amboy Crater, the old Amboy Crater. And then here's Pisgah Amboy, second Amboy, and Pisgah. Now there's a gold mine here, or was, all the way, well, let's see, I don't even know if we can find it. There it is. Now I don't know if they're still doing anything there gold mine wise, but I, I'm here to tell you, a plume that big would be something maybe equal to a small nuclear device to kick up that big of a plume that quick, going up to 15,000 feet and spreading out across the whole Mojave Desert, right off the highway, but invisible to the human eye right after sunset. Let's go look at the view going from daylight into sunset. True color view. And we will rewind just a little bit. There we go. Here's throughout the day today. Here's this morning. Here's sunrise. Here's this morning, this afternoon. You see, it's just clear. We go into sunset. Boom, there's sunset. Still clear. Nothing. Now let's go look at the other radar stations. Just to prove it's not just this radar station that's picking it up. That was Edwards Air Force Base radar, but let's go over to Las Vegas. It'll pick it up down on the southwest side of the radar. Right there. It's right at the perimeter, actually, at the 100 nautical mile range. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> Oh, boy. 100 nautical miles exactly from the radar in Las Vegas. Right at the perimeter edge. Boom, poof. Just proof you can see it on other radar stations. Let's go look at another one. Let's go look at uh, L.A. Santa Ana Mountains. And you'll see their beams, of course. Looking at some out in the ocean. And right about there, you can see it. There's the origin point. It's on the perimeter of the area, so it's not picking it up as intense. Again, this is down below the mountain. You've got a mountain range in between these two. So this is just the tops that it's picking up there, which it detects as low, but really it's the tops. So think of that at like 15,000. Well, actually, that matches. Look, 10 to 20, 10 to 20. And it, we know it matched out at like 15, so it, we're only seeing the tops of it over the mountain. Does that make sense? Okay. Back to it. So we can't see it with the human eye. Or there's nothing there, so to speak. If you were there to look up in the sky, it would be a humid, very humid night in the middle of the desert next to a volcanic field that just put off a few mile wide steam release. And then that gets us into what's going on seismically speaking, which... Of course, this is 48 hours worth of earthquakes. We can turn down the rings a little bit to get a good idea of what's moving. But we just had a three right here along the coast, Southern California, Santa Barbara. And we're right next to, or just north of, the oil pumping operations. Well, here, let me show you on Google Earth. Out here. Quite literally, here are our offshore rigs. Platform A, whatever that is. Platform Hill House. You see where they are. There's Lompoc. And we go down here into Ventura. Let's go back and look at the earthquake. 
That's right where it is. It is quite literally right next to the oil rigs. We get a 3.4 out there at the drill points. So how are they related? Well, drill points and volcanoes, both weak points in the plate as the plate starts to get compressed. And the plate was shifting over the past several days with a series of tremors, and not just several days, past several weeks of shifting up to the north, up here. Washington, Oregon, Northern California. All of these little red dots are vibrations as the plate shifts. So they do have magnitudes assigned to them, but think of them more like vibrations as the plate shifts as opposed to breaking in the plate, right? An earthquake breaking in a fault as opposed to these vibrating as the plate shifts. But it's a huge area that's shifting. So when the areas shift, we see compensation next to it, down to the south, and over to the east. It seeks out the weak points, this transferring seismic pressure, and hence we get the drill points getting hit, and we get the volcano putting off some kind of steam out there in the desert. Now that's not all that's going on. Same day, we get a 4.0 earthquake over the drill points over in Oklahoma, and the east coast started to move on the edge of the North American craton. Compare the craton diagram, that interior brownish rusty color, to the earthquakes. It's a perfect match. And they're right on our arrows, no less. So we have an outbreak in Idaho. We have an outbreak in Utah. 3.6. It's actually bigger than the earthquake on the West Coast. Do you want to see what's there? What if I told you that it may be tied into what's going on in California, out in the desert? That out off the coast, at the drill points, the oil rigs, we get a 3.4. Let's go put the coordinates in over in Utah, see what's there. Now, I have a sneaking suspicion. I already know what's there. Sure do. Previous earthquake activity, but we're on the north side of this. The Markagunt Plateau, which all of these old cones and lava flows make up the whole plateau. Some of them aren't so old if you really look at them in comparison to the landscape around. That's not forest fire. That's all lava flow. Okay, the, let's go up on the north side of it. Right here is where the last marked volcano is. And you can see it spilled down the mountainside. Let's take a look at it from a side profile. There we go. So, up here a fissure formed flowed downhill. Now, why does that matter? Our earthquakes are right on the north side of where that tear formed a long time ago on the edge of the Markagunt Plateau. Oh, by the way, feel free to pause it and read it if you need to get up to speed on the Markagunt. So why am I taking the time to show all that to you? If we go between here and go up across and over to here, out here is where the volcano just did its thing, out in the middle of the Mojave Desert. Again, if you draw a line between 3.4 and the 3.6, it goes right along this. Do you see this? Here, let me zoom in a little bit. Well, you know what? There's another way we can look at this. Let's go over to the USGS map, actually. Let's go to the USGS plate boundary map. Here, take a look at the screen. This, the Garlock Fault. Now, they kind of have a dead ending out here in California, but nonetheless, it's the perfect path between here and up to here. And down in the middle of it, on the south side, we get pressure that comes in. Of course, we have movement going across the area. I just showed it to you with the earthquake activity. We have arrows across the area telling you that we have one set that points down along the coast and another set that goes over to Utah. Who's in between the two? That sandwiched point. Now, that may be why there are so many volcanic complexes out there to begin with. Now, I'd like to show you something else before we go any further. Looking at this, it looks like a hot mess. A lot of volcano names. But look at all the little red dots that are on this map. These are not tremors. Not like the red dots I showed you on the other map. These red dots on Google Earth are from the weather satellite. Detected as heat signatures, and it's filtering them out. It's saying it's some kind of mistake being detected. Some kind of heat anomaly being detected. Well, that's very interesting, isn't it? Because the only one out in the Mojave Desert, right next to where our big plume just came up, right here, computer filtering it out again. Sorry, mistake. But 
isn't your eye drawn over here to the east? Look what's going on in New Mexico. Look what's going on in Arizona. Look what's going on all the way up here to the north at the Four Corners region. I, I, something's going on out in the desert. On the edge of Pastora Peak, volcanoes. And this is more like the Grand Canyon. But nothing to worry about. The computer's filtering it out. Says it's just a mistake. Now what are the chances? Let's go take a street level view on this and see how fire prone of an area it is. See if there's a lot of stuff there to burn. Maybe there is. Maybe the overhead view is misleading. Now, to put it in perspective, grass fires don't usually show up on this weather satellite. A five acre grass fire didn't even show up next to my house. And they had the fire department there to try to put it out. It was an accidental fire, but it was five acres. So in this case, we're out in the desert where most of this is sand. So we're not dealing with large forest fire areas at all. Certainly not big enough to be detected like this. Which, of course, we don't have to worry because computers filtering it out saying it's not a fire at all. Doesn't know what to make of it, so it's just getting rid of it. So if we have clusters of hot spots that point back right down to the spot that just had this steam event. Here's Amboy. Out here is Pisgah. These two. And we have a hot spot right over here on the edge of it. The furthest most west hot spot is this one. And then we spread out across the area, focus in on this. Well, what's this? What are, what are those? Well, that's an old High Plains Butte. But from when? Long time ago. These go back to when this was an ancient inland ocean. Before the Grand Canyon drained out. <laughs> yeah, you guys know about the Grand Canyon draining out, don't you? Uh, another story entirely. Okay, so, getting back to it. Volcano... Something going on out in the deserts of the Mojave Desert in California. I have to make you aware of it for a few reasons. Seismically speaking, back in 2011, when all the stink was kicked up with the USGS, and in July, by September, my channel was deleted. But in between the time where we detected that steam signature back in July of 2011, and September when my channel was deleted, a five-point-something earthquake struck right next to where the steam plumes came out. I want to say it was like a month later. So at the start of September, maybe? I don't remember the exact date. Maybe somebody can go look that up. But it was within weeks of the steam event, there was a noteworthy earthquake out here in the Mojave Desert. So it's not beyond possibility, or let's just say it's not impossible that there could be a multi-mile-wide release of steam that comes up, and if you were there on the ground, it would feel humid. But it condenses across a huge valley, a couple miles wide, spreads out over the course of a day. Small gust of wind comes in, kicks it up, goes up to 10,000 feet. And next thing you know, you're picking it up on radar, coming out of the desert, and it disappears into thin air. And everybody forgets about it. Nobody even looks at it, except for a few people online. Then, a few weeks later, nobody's paying attention. And the earthquake strikes next to the spot that released the steam. That happened in 2011. We'll see if it happens again now, 10 years later, in 2021. Nobody can tell me it's the military now. Nobody can tell me it's a thunderstorm now. Nobody can deny it. We have to wait to see. Denying upright is just foolish. Document what it is. Talk about what happened in the past. And I told you 10 years ago, if you can find my videos, that if it ever happened again in the future, we would know that there was something legit happening there. There it is. It happened again. And it happened, well, actually three times in 2011. And at the end of 2011, that's when I told you, I was like, look, this is three times. If we get to time number four, we know something's going on. Well, here we are 10 years later. And time number four has finally happened. What an amazing time to see it. So what's going on? What could cause it? Well, we have a major series of earthquakes that have taken place over the past week. Going over into China with a seven, biggest earthquake in years in Asia. Eruptions increasing, 50,000 foot at one, 35 at another, that was last week. The big eruption over here in Africa, people died. It's a serious. So that's all going, oh, Hawaii increased, 
The number of earthquakes went up through the roof across Hawaii. You can see them here. Even the magnitudes went back up to four, which fulfills the forecast for Hawaii for right now. I have not checked the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center in a couple days. Probably should do that. You know what? Let's go over together and check the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center before we get out of here. Nevados de Chilean down in Chile. Okay, there's the African volcano. Hey, Great Sitkin Island has erupted up in Alaska. What the heck? How big? Oh, of course, an ad. I like to support this channel, guys. Their volcano discovery are great, so I don't turn off ads. Uh, Great Sitkin, how big? New explosion. Whoa! They got a picture of it. Short-lived, right? Fifteen thousand feet. Great Sitkin Island blew today up in Alaska. Let's go look it up. I don't even know where it is. Wow. Okay, something is up because Great Sitkin just blew, and we get a steam release on the same day down in California. Here it is. So there's Great Sitkin right in the middle of the Aleutian Island chain. I don't recall having to report on Great Sitkin in maybe four years or something. It's been a long time. You know what? I bet there's a Smithsonian on the Great Sitkin that we could get the last eruptive date on. Probably wasn't that long ago, but certainly it's not normally on the list. That is amazing. Smithsonian information here. Eruptive history. Yeah, 2019, two years ago. Confirmed eruption two years ago. And then before that, it was a year. And then before that, it was 20 years. Or 15 years. So it goes long periods where it doesn't erupt. And then a couple years. And then it waited now two years. And now it's back. So it's definitely not a normal eruptor. So there we go. We've got volcanic activity over at Great Sitkin. We've got activity, and they got a picture of it. And then we have, what else? Anybody else on the list? Let's keep going. So one over in Africa, very rare. People are perished on that. And one up in Alaska, that's rare. Both going same day that we get some kind of steam thing going on out in the Mojave, which happens once every 10 years or so. Maybe once every five years. Maybe it happened somewhere in 2015. Mount Krakatau also erupted over in Indonesia. How big? 6,000. Okay, that's small. Luatolo's going in Indonesia. That's not normally on the list. Well, that's a lot of eruptions for the list for the past couple days. Look how long that list is. So while the number of volcanoes is actually increasing, the number of eruptions is also increasing. Now it all stems back to the deep earthquakes that are raised high off the globe. The more deep earthquakes that we get, the shallower, larger earthquakes that spread out, and of course the volcanic activity starts to flare up. We had a solar event that came in in the past week. Well, actually, I think two of them. So whenever we have incoming solar blasts that come in from the sun, especially when they're Earth-directed, we can see an increase in deep earthquakes, shallower, larger earthquakes, and volcanic activity globally. So you'll get various places, like down in Africa, or up in Iceland the last time that we had the solar. And then, of course, now here we are. And we have another sudden event, series of events, including Alaska and the west coast of the United States. I'd watch out for seismic Southern California. Last time, 10 years ago. I mean, I really don't have many examples to go on on this. But when I see an outgassing of any kind at a volcano that doesn't normally do anything, we watch for seismic to follow that up. How big would you put it? I mean, look, your guess is probably as good as mine, and it would be a guess because we don't have many past examples to go on. If I have one past example to go on, a five hit, then we would go with most likely a five will hit. Out in the Mojave within the next couple weeks or less because the last time it took, what, three weeks? We're talking volcano here. We're not talking seismic spread like we normally talk about with my forecasting. So this is an entirely different beast that we're talking about out here in the Mojave. I just find it highly interesting that it's sandwiched between the two largest earthquakes of the day, 
which is a 3.4 out here at the drill points off the coast of California's southern coast, and a 3.6 up here at the volcano at the Markagunt Plateau. The rest of the earthquakes mimic the edge of the craton, which even maybe even the untrained eye would be able to match. Here, hold on, let me show this to you. For new viewers, you'll just be mind blown about this. Turn off the magnitudes there. The earthquakes that are coming in from the northwest, they make like a diagonal line coming out of Montana, going down into Yellowstone, right? And you'll see there's a line of earthquakes that comes out of California and goes over to Utah. Now, these come together. I mean, you really could just say that's a giant arrow shape of two sets of quakes that are both coming in to the edge of the Craton towards Colorado going down to New Mexico. And what's going on right here at the four corners over to Colorado down to New Mexico right now? The weather satellite is picking up a bunch of hot spots going across there right up to the edge of the Craton over into New Mexico, Colorado, the Four Corners area. This is the Four Corners. Colorado's on the northeast side here. Colorado here, New Mexico here. Hotspots going across it, going across the deformed edge of the Craton, focusing back on in to one hotspot right here in the Mojave, over here on the side of the highway, right next to where we just blew something. Not going to settle. For any explanation from the USGS on this, I'm making the explanation. They can come to me for the info. We're not looking to them to tell us what it is, as if they would or something. We don't need them to do the cutting-edge breaking news science discoveries. They can do the analysis afterwards. They're not known for breaking news or for finding things. They're known for reviewing other people's things that are found just to remind everyone. Okay, so let's get a display capture turned off now, and let's just go back in and check the chat room really quick. This is chat live over on Twitch, and see if our viewers have any more updates to add to this. They make a big difference. Sometimes they found stuff or are telling me about stuff during the whole update, and I have to tune in here just to see. Ah, the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory has put out a notice. What? Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, will you please post that again? What is the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory warning for? Is that for the Great Sitkin? Or is that something else? And we'll wait for a response on that from the chat room. While we're doing that, everybody word up and much love. If you're watching on YouTube, this is pre-recorded, but this is live in front of an audience. If you want to come over and watch, I've posted the link a thousand times. It's free to watch. If you want to chat, of course, you have to be a paying subscriber. But that keeps the trolls out. Keeps the trolls out. Some of them. Others will pay me to come in and troll, which I'll, I'll, I'll still ban them, but pay me five bucks, that's fine. Okay. So the good news is the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory that posted the link was not for any eruptive activity in Hawaii right now. I guess that's the main point I'm getting at. So... We can just move on from that. Kilauea is no longer erupting, according to the USGS. Famous last words. Oh, man. They should have put out a... It should have said, knock on wood at the end of their little press release. Never say never. Hey, hold on. I've got, I've got something. I've got something. They said that Pu'u'o'o, back when Pu'u'o'o erupted, they said it wasn't a new eruption, that it was the same eruption that was going on for 20-something years, and it didn't count as a new eruption. So how could this end? <laughs> Just pointing that out. Okay, anyway, word up, much love. I'll be back saving this as a video. We will put it out over on YouTube, and you guys can watch it back. One more time, for everybody here who's new, 2011, this happened 10 years ago. I had a young channel. I was picked on by a big agency. They smeared me in the news. They said it was a thunderstorm. They ended up deleting their press release a day later because it carried on for three days. Here we are 10 years later. I'm documenting it again. This time I expect responsible coverage. I would tell all my viewers, 
Do not go out to Death Valley. Don't go out to the Mojave. Don't do anything like that. It's the 21st century. And it's already up in the night sky. And unless it happens again and you're just lucky enough to be somewhere around to see some humidity coming out of the ground, even if you somehow were to record haze in a valley, everybody would just tell you, that's just haze in a valley or turka turka. But we don't listen to them anymore. Something's going on out in the desert next to Pisgah Crater. And it's an active ancient volcano if there is such a thing. So there's heat still associated with that down below. Whether or not it's ever going to erupt again, I kind of don't care. I don't think it's going to erupt now. I think we're talking about steam being evaporated out of the ground over a large area. All at once. So a rapid influx of heat came in from somewhere deep down below. And deep down below, up steams up over the course of five, two to five miles. Humidity. Picked up by the radar, though, which is just mind-blowing at about how much that would be. It formed some kind of water droplets, showed you on the radar, so that's not up for debate. Hydrometer classifications, showing you a tenth of an inch of rain, showing you it's not dust, showing you it's not an explosion, showing you height and elevation of the actual whatever kind of cloud it is. Certainly not visible to the human eye. It's not visible on shortwave, not visible on longwave, not visible on water vapor, but it is producing some kind of water vapor return on radar. That sums it up. It's something volcanic coming from a volcanic location at a time where the plate is shifting. To dismiss it as anything else is hogwash, foolishness, and doesn't belong in science and study. Have a good afternoon, morning, night, evening, wherever you are. I'll record this, and we will get it out over on YouTube. Peace out.